it's either inspirational or direct from behind the veil or through a messenger inspiration so if we would like to divide the types of wahi we can divide it into two types either they are direct or indirect and what do we mean by direct it can be through inspiration it can be through dreams it can be from behind the veil and we will talk inshallah in not so much details i don't know if i'm going fast or slow the time yeah i'm afraid i'm going to finish the course before the book <laughs> so we have to extend it until the circuit. Right. So this is the direct. The indirect, it can come also through means that we will get to know, inshallah. First one, wahi, through dreams or inspirations, directly but from behind the veil, or sending a messenger, an angel, through from <laughs> through form an angel and form of ringing bell. This is the, where how the angel comes. Who made this? I did. Okay, true dreams. First of all, what is meant by true dreams? Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, tells us that inspiration, wahi, started with the Prophet at the beginning, six months. He used to see dreams that would come 100% reality when he wakes up. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that the dreams of prophets are revelation. They're always true. Why? Dreams can be from shaitan or not. It can be from Shaitan. The Prophet tells us, alayhi salatu wasalam, when any one of you sees something in his dream that he dislikes, he said, you should seek Allah's refuge from Shaitan three times and blows three times on his left. Be careful, the wife is not in your left. <laughs> or your husband. Because then it would be a problem. But why do we do this? Because we believe that dreams can be from Shaitan. The Prophet tells us, alayhi salatu wasalam, dreams are divided into three types. A dream that is a vision from Allah. And this is one part of 46 parts of prophethood or prophethood or prophecy. One out of 46. What is the convenience of the number 46? Scholars said that the Prophet was revealed for how long? How many years? 23 years. And he had these dreams for how many months? Six months. So this means that out of 23 years, this is one out of 46 because he used to have them twice. If, you, if six months, there are two six months in a year. And when you have 23 years of revelation, 23 years, this. Uh, 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 leads to 46 parts. So, so a ru'ya sadiqa, the clear and honest vision, is one part out of 46 parts. This is how they related to the period of wahi. And the Prophet says that there are three. One, the truthful vision. So many times we wake up and we say, we see that I've seen this and this. And subhanAllah it happens. And if Allah intends good for you, you utilize this theme to say, I am sinful. Allah is giving me true vision. I should be more careful, avoid sin, and try my best to do good deeds. But if you are not among those who Allah intends well for you, you will say, ah, mashallah, I am seeing visions. This means I'm a wali. I'm a, mashallah, an excellent person. I don't have to pray for him today. I see, I see visions. Maybe, subhanAllah, maybe in a year or two I become a prophet. Allah knows. And I've seen people like this. I've seen people through these dreams that come true, they are deviated. 
And some of them get these doubts to the extent that I have a colleague in my company and he, mashallah, makes Umrah once every week. He spends the weekend, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in Mecca, in Haram. And he comes and I tell him, why don't you do this in his life, in his, you know, affairs. I advise him, why do you don't, do, don't you do this? He says, I know it's not going to happen. So he becomes negative. Why? He says, I have visions and I see things. And I know this will never ever materialize. And he stops from progressing because of these dreams. Honest and true visions. The second type of dreams are dreams from shaitan. He comes to you and says, this evil thing will happen. He makes you look in a bad situation. He gives you dreams about your friends, that they are deceiving you, they're lying, they're plotting to assassinate you, to harm you. And when you wake up, you say, Ah, oh, my friend, Abdullah, I'm not talking. Why? I saw a vision that he's going to do this and this about me. SubhanAllah. Shaitan is playing with you. And you're believing him? And that is why one of the companions came to the Prophet and told him, Oh Prophet of Allah, I saw a vision yesterday. And the Prophet used to like hearing people's visions. <laughs> Every Fajr prayer after Fajr. Has anyone seen a dream today? Of course, everybody comes and says, yes, I did or not. And if no one comes forward, he says, I saw a dream. It was like this and this and this. So one of the companions said, oh, Prophet of Allah, I saw a dream. What did you see? I saw that my head was chopped and I was carrying it in my hand. And I was walking and the Prophet got angry. And he said, why do you talk about things when shaitan play with you? This is from shaitan. This is not a dream. This is not a vision. This is not something positive. Anything that is negative, it is from shaitan. Anything that is positive, it is from Allah. You should be happy. You should not tell anyone about bad dreams. Any bad dream you think, you see, you should ignore and not tell anybody about it. Any good dream you see, you should only tell those who love you. Those who care about you. Because they will interpret it. And however they interpret it, it will become true. So if you go to someone and you tell him, I see myself in a garden, lots of rain, rivers flowing, and I'm in white clothes. And this guy, you tell him he is not your friend or he's not a good person. He said, you're going to drown and they're going to wrap you in kafan. <laughs> but if, if a person who loves you, he would say, MashaAllah, this is inshallah, uh, 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 a prophecy that you will go to paradise and you will have this nice white clothes that means that you have no sins inshallah good, good positive things this is the second type of dreams the third type of dreams is what bothers you during the day so you are an accountant and you have to do lots of calculations when you go to bed all what you see is mathematics, calculations. You are a tailor and in your dreams you see you no know, trousers, suits, dresses. You are an ice cream uh, a man. All what you see is vanilla, chocolate and mixing with, with this ice cream. So these things are affected because of your activities in the morning. This has nothing to do with good dreams, uh, 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 honest and, and prophecies or with the devil, it's something that you engage in your subconscious. Okay. Then there is the inspiration that used to be whispered into the Prophet Prophet's heart by the angels, verily the Holy Spirit has. This is type of the way where the Holy Spirit to be throws in his soul but this is not Quran and we will come to the definition of Hadith Al-Qudsi, Hadith Al-Nabawi and the difference between Quran and, and, and all of this. <coughs> Can anyone give me an example of a vision that the Prophet say, say, uh, saw and became reality? The, the Sikhar? No, the Sikhar was not a dream. The conqueror of of Makkah, that's true. It is mentioned in Surah Al-Fatih. لَقَدْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَهُ الرُّحِيَ بِالْحَقِّ لَتَذْكُلُنَّ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامِ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِنِينَ 
مُحَلِّقِينَ بُوسَكُمْ وَمُقَصِّرِينَ لَا تَخَافُ Allah Azza wa Jal had made the prophecy, the vision that you have seen, true. You will, insha'Allah, enter Mecca, conquering Mecca, and in safe mode. You will be safe and secure, and you do not fear anything. You will be shaving your heads or cutting short your hair after performing Umrah and uh, so on. Also, there is another vision by a famous prophet. <laughs> Ibrahim he saw in his vision that I am going to slaughter Ismail, his son. Imagine a man who is over 80 and who was deprived of offspring. Allah blesses him with Ismail. And just while he is reaching the age of puberty, 13, 14 years old, he sees this vision. And the vision of prophets are a reality, is a reality. So he did not spit three times on his left. He knew that this is right from Allah. He went to his son and he told him, this is what I see. So what do you think? His son did not say, <laughs> you're asking me, I'm going to... His son is a prophet and a messenger. He said, if I'm a dogma, do what you're told. I will find me patient. This is from Allah Azza wa Jal. Now imagine how can someone give his life through a vision? Because they believe and they know Allah. And we have the revelation of the Quran full of instructions and guidance and we neglect to follow. And we logic, man, is, this is not me, it's intended. No, no, Allah does not want this. And I do not understand. I'm not going to apply this. What kind of Muslims are we when we compare ourselves to not the prophets, not the messengers, not the companions, but to those who practice Islam as they are supposed to do. Also, the angel used to come to him in his true form and in the form of a human. Let me go through this. The inspiration used to come to him like a ringing bell, what Allah spoke to him directly, just as he spoke to Moses. Okay, we said that speaking or wahi inspiration to the Prophet can be direct and it can be indirect. The direct type, we talked about it, and it is either through inspiration, where Allah Azza wa Jal throws into him, whispered into him, well, this is through the angel. To him, something that has to be communicated to his followers. It is also can be through direct speech. And this can be done only through from behind a veil. And this took place in Al Mi'raj when the Prophet <coughs> was taken to uh, the seventh heaven and Allah gave him the prayers and he spoke with him. But Allah Azzajal talked also to another Prophet, <coughs> to Musa. <coughs> What's the difference between the two forms of talking? The same? Why not? <laughs> yes, it's the same. One was on earth and one was in the seventh heaven. So who is greater? The Prophet Muhammad because he was spoken to in a more elevated uh, uh, way. And this is the uh, direct way of communication. The indirect comes through the angel. And the angel has two ways of communicating to our Prophet ﷺ, Jibreel. Jibreel either comes in his angelic form as an angel. He does not change. The angels have the ability to change their form to humans, to other creatures. This is something that Allah has given them. Also, the, the, the jinn have this form, right? You know the jinn? Can you give an example of jinn? Do I do this? Huh? Iblis is uh, the father of all jinn. No, but there is an example that they can come in different forms. Black dog, black dog, Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira, Abu Huraira. The what? 
python that assisted snakes snakes they come in, in forms of snakes ayat al kursi very good the ayat al kursi origin <coughs> yeah the story where abu huraira was the keeper on the food of the prophet as some of the muslims from bait al mal and a, 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 a man came to try to steal from him abu huraira captured him and he said that i am a man with lots of children and i'm i'm to leave me and i will not return so he left him. the second day the prophet as a son said this is definitely not me the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said what did your prisoner do yesterday abu huraira he said oh prophet of allah he said that he's weak and he's poor and he has children so i took so and i left him and he said he will come back second night he came back and he did the same and abu huraira the third night he said i will not leave you so the this man told them listen let me go and i will teach you a verse of the quran that if you recite no jinn can affect you at all and he taught him ayat al kursi so the prophet said i just some asked him abu huraira what did you do with your president he said he said he taught me this verse of prophet of allah the prophet said sadaqa ka wa huwa kadhu he had told you the truth but usually he said i so this shows us that they come in forms different forms what is the difference between the two forms of transformation scholars some scholars say that then an angel if he comes in the form of a man or of any other creature and you harm this form it would not affect the angel but if the jinn transforms to a form and you harm this form you can kill it as in the case of snake the snakes and that is why if you find a snake <coughs> come on if you find a snake in your house do not kill it crazy no seriously if you find a snake in your house you have to give it warning unless it is attacking or it's harming you because there are lots of snakes that do not harm and the prophet says whenever you go to your house and find a snake we we'll give them a warning that by allah if you believe in allah azza wa jalla leave the house or i will kill you you have to give this warning if it doesn't need you have the ability and the permission to kill it if you don't it can kill you as in the hadith where the, uh, the companion of the prophet as salam who was newly married and once he was doing prayer and he came back and he saw his wife <coughs> standing at the doorway immediately he got angry and he wanted to do something wrong because he thought that she was not straight and she told him don't be hasty wait there is a snake inside the house so he took his spear and he went to the house he saw the snake and he threw the snake with that spear and as he did this the snake killed him and died so both died and the prophet as some said when he was told about this that these houses are inhabited by jinn and they come in the form of snakes <clears throat> he told us that there is one or two types of snakes with certain characteristics that if you find them kill them immediately and the poison is so and so and this is not the time to uh, elaborate so they say that if you kill the jinn in his transformed uh, form it will affect him it will kill him it will harm him but the said that the, the, the angel is not and there is a famous hadith in bukhari where the angel of death came to musa as a son in the form of a man and the minute he saw him musa mashallah was a, a great strong fighter one punch one blow the last is over it's history that like is it he did with the uh, the coffin one blow he just wanted to separate them and the man was expired so he did this and he <coughs> you know harm the angel's eye in the human form so the angel went to the to the Allah to them he sent me to a man who does not want to die so Allah told him go back to him and tell him and introduce yourself so he went and he introduced himself and told him that Allah says it's time to go so he asked him uh if I, I don't want to what will happen he said you can live as long as you want, I wish and then says then what 
Are you going to do that? It's, it's, it's inevitable. So, no, then let it be now as prescribed. So the angel did not uh, suffer from this because it was on his human form and it did not affect his uh, uh, condition. So, indirect through an angel, it can be in two forms. Either the angel comes in his angelic form, and this is the most difficult for the Prophet. Why? Because, and, and you have to understand how this angelic form is. The Prophet saw Ali Salam Jibreel how many times? Two times. Two times. Okay. He saw him twice. The time he saw him on his regular uh, original form, he saw him sitting on a throne, a big chair, covering the horizon. You know, when, some, when you see a big plane, it covers this big. He saw him covering the whole horizon. He had how many wings? 600 wings. Falling from it, emeralds, jewels, pearls. And he could not see anything because of his huge signs. His feet upon him. This is Jibreel. And we cannot imagine, Yani, when you come and, and talk about things that are, are unseen. People talk and say, well, it's like this, it's like that. SubhanAllah. If you, a Shafi, may Allah have mercy on his soul, heard that one of the sons of Harun al-Rashid talks about Allah and talks about Allah's hand, and he forms Allah's hand. We know that Allah has two hands. And we cannot say that they, His hands are like ours. And we also do not ignore the fact that He has hands. We don't say that these hands mean power. No, Allah has hands. How? Allah knows. So the man was saying Allah has hands and He has fingers and He has a palm and He has the back of His hand and it has this. So Shafi'i went to him and said, my nephew, my son, I heard that you talk about Allah Azza wa Jal. And let Allah and aside, we will not talk about Allah. Tell me about the hadith of Jibreel where he has 600 wings. Let Jibreel on the side. If I have a bird with three wings, can you put them? Put three wings. How are you going to put them? You're going to put two wings here in the third. It's going to be a top. Or you cannot imagine this. So how can you put 600 wings to Jibreel? You cannot imagine it. How can you imagine Allah Azza wa Jal, who the seven heavens and the seven earths, to his chair, to the kursi, the, the stool with, this is the translation, the stool of, of, of the legs with, where, where the king or puts his legs, not the chair that he sits uh, uh, at, not the arsh, the kursi, these heavens and earth are like a ring thrown into the desert. Imagine the size. And you want to talk about Allah Azza wa He is beyond your comprehension. He's beyond your understanding. So never think of Allah. Think of His creations. If you want to think, think of what Allah created. Look. And that was, that's why Allah says, Look at the camels. How Allah created them at the wonders and marvels of camels. Don't think of Allah Azza wa Jal. Just worship Him, love Him, fear Him. So, when the angel came to the Prophet in his angelic form, this was the most difficult. Because the Prophet as a human had to grasp and take all this power, all this revelation from the angelic form, from the original. And this is difficult. It's not the same form. So it was so hard to the extent that the Prophet ﷺ, in a cold day would sweat as pearls. The sweat would come out of him. And if he was on a camel, the camel would sit because it was so heavy. Zayd ibn Thabit, one of the scribes, one of those who used to scribe the wahi, says that I was with the Prophet ﷺ, and Allah revealed to him, and his thigh was on my thigh. And I started shouting from pain. 
because of the heaviness of his leg on my leg. I was sitting next to him, you know, when you sit next to someone, you're close in a circle. You can't have your thigh on top of your brother's thigh. And I said, I will never walk again. It's so heavy, I thought it's broken. I will never walk again. So this was very difficult to the Prophet and he suffered a lot from it. The second type is when the angel comes to the Prophet in a human form. And there was a famous companion, Dihya al Kalbi, may Allah be with him. And he was a very handsome companion. And all the companions used to see him. His name is Dihya al Kalbi. And they used to see him, but the Prophet tells, tells them that this is Jibreel, peace be upon him. Or he might come in a form that nobody knows him. And in the hadith of Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. When he said that a man, while we were, we were with the Prophet, a man came white in clothes, black in hair, pitch black, and we don't see any traces of traveling on him, which means that. He's not a traveler and he's not from Medina. So where did this come from? He came from the heavens. But they did not know at the time the benefit of the doubt. And he 